Our guest today is Ramesh Motwani, an entrepreneur and philanthropist who has been lately working very hard to help the community here in the United States as well as in India. Ramesh, welcome to our studio. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So what we have done is absolutely astonishing and uh, really very uh, commend-worthy that what you did in India to a Pharma Institute. And uh, how did this journey start? I was watching Warren Buffet and Bill Gates interview, which they did almost 15, 20 years ago. And I was thinking that I had to do something here as well as in India. So it took me too long to think about it. So I said, I will give 40% and I'll give 40% of my assets in India for the good cause and the uh, rest will be the family and everything. So you mean like when you say the 40% assets you will donate to USC, you mean the university where you went, Northeastern yes, University? Yes. And then 40% of your assets will go to the Tolani Motwani? No. In, in, in India, yep. in India, including Tulani. Tulani, okay, yes. okay, perfect. So uh, now you were one of the, now you, of course, you closed down your company for several years ago, but you were one of the most successful Indian entrepreneurs in the United States. Your company, uh, Eastern Contractors, was named one of the largest Indian-owned uh, companies here in the, in the United States. Uh, can you... Tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurship journey. From starting from Bo uh, Boston? From Boston, yes. yes. I think I started the construction business in 1979. And uh, everything I touched turned into gold. Mm. To the extent, in less than nine, ten years, I was owning a much, much, um, the Rolls Royce, mm -hmm. and I was the only Indian in the United States mm -hmm. owning in, in, in Boston. In Boston, yeah. And uh, I was too lucky, and uh, I was too uh, taking too much, too much, too much interest in my company, and it grew very fast. Mm -hmm. To the extent that uh, when I closed the company, I had to close it because I could not handle it and I saw that from now onward I'm not making any money. Mm -hmm. So I said, Ramesh, it's about time that do it, uh, close it and that's what I did in 2007 and eight. Mm -hmm. I closed the company. And so ever since then, I've been more active in Thai Boston. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board of members. Mm -hmm. I have been active and the board of Thai Boston. Yes, Thai Boston. Mm -hmm. I have been a board member in Northeastern University mm -hmm. as a ambassador, mm -hmm. ambassador, as well as board member. I have been very active in uh, Gandhi Dam College where I started my school. Mm -hmm. And that is where the Tolani Motwani Institute belongs yes, to. Yes, mm -hmm. that's where I, where I went there in 2001. Uh, 1990. Uh, Several, a dozen I mean, years ago? I mean, uh, 2005 or 4. No, no, no. no. This, is two, this is going back to 1960. Okay. I oh, went, this is when, when you went yes. to the college, of course, yes, sure. I went there in 62. Okay. And uh, I did a diploma in uh, civil engineering. And uh, then I went to Kuwait and uh, I went to Kuwait for only two one-week mm -hmm. visas. One visa I could not get a job so I had to exit mm -hmm. and again second time I re-entered and I got the job after six days and uh, started working over there as an engineer in a resident, resident engineer on mm -hmm. the construction project and while I was living nearby American Embassy, I went there and uh, picked, the, picked up the farm and I filled out 
And would you believe that in less than 11 days, my mm. immigration was approved to the United States. Mm. Mm. And after one week, I went to the boss and said, Sir, I think I want to go to the United States and I would like to quit. And my boss said, Really? No, no, no. You had to, you had to do the project over here. You are not leaving me. I'll double your salary. Mm -hmm. So my salary was double. Mm -hmm. And I said, But I have to go. I said, After finishing this job, you can go. Mm -hmm. So then I came to this country mm -hmm. in 1970. And you came to North Eastern, if I'm not wrong. No, I came to uh, here to uh, what you call on immigration. Okay. And uh, I worked odd jobs. Okay. And uh, like uh, I was a machinist, I was uh, a numerical control uh, machinist and uh, worked the way out and I bought my house in Needham and uh, that house became the gold mine. Mm -hmm. And I went to North Eastern University and did my complete bachelor's because mm -hmm. I had forgotten everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I joined the master's program also. Mm -hmm. And halfway through, I got job job from the, uh, what do you call it, uh, construction company. Mm -hmm. And I started the construction right there. And less than 15 months, I quit mm -hmm. and started my business. Mm -hmm. And that was called Eastern Contractors, yes, it started. based in Framingham here mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, yes, yes. right? First, first was from the basement of my house mm -hmm. in Needham, mm -hmm. then to Newton I moved. Mm -hmm. From Newton I moved to Framingham, mm -hmm. I bought the office, mil office building. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I closed the business, uh, business, I closed the business in Framingham. Yeah. So now let's come back to a uh, little bit talk about entrepreneurship. And uh, it, uh, of course you have been very successful entrepreneur. Uh, if I ask you to give us uh, two advice to budding entrepreneurs who wants to start a company and who have different background, they are immigrants, what advice you would give to them? My first advice to them is A, you have to work very hard. Don't think that hard, hard work is not going to do anything mm. less than that. Mm. Secondly, when you are you are looking looking to the success, do one step at a time. Mm. Go from one step, and then second step, and then third step. Go for at least six steps, and go to landing ground for a little bit. Then again, go to the next step, because if you are going to go too, too fast, fast, yes, and you'll come down too fast. Sure. Uh, other lesson, this is number one. Number two is that uh, you have to be surrounded by good advisors. For example, here in Boston, I had few few advisors who I listened to very carefully. Whatever they said, I did all the way to their teeth. And I listen to some people, and I don't want to name them because mm. there'll be certain, certain people will be offended. Mm. But uh, I listened to a few people, and they were my biggest advisors. Advisors. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, coming as you come towards the uh, end of this interview, uh, lately you have been like supporting Northeastern University and also this university in India in Gujarat. Um, what advice you will give to people who wants to get into philanthropy, who wants to, they have done their job, they have successfully retired, or they are still working but they want to contribute to society. How, what is the best way to go? As I said that I watched Warren Buffet and Bill Gates and I saw that 80, 19 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent of their assets are given to philanthropy mm. and if your children they already have got MBAs and doctors and whatever they have then why you want to give away everything to your children only mm. 
in what way your children are going to carry out your assets all the way to your dream world. But if you are really giving back to society, the society is from where we started. Mm -hmm. And society is going to give us all the way the reward which Lord Krishna is saying mm -hmm. that guys, what did you came from? Came with nothing and you end up in going nothing. Mm -hmm. Ramesh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, sir.